So here's today's challenge. This is the Marineland, I'm not sure what model is the problem, but you can hear the sound. Now that's not too bad. This is in the office tank. But in the living room, it was really bugging me to have that grinding sound all the time. So I finally bit the bullet. And you have to keep in mind that we just recently bought 10 boxes, four filter cartridges per box of the Marineland Size E filter cartridge. They were on sale. So for example, I just went to one of the aquarium stores and that four pack size E was $15.99. I've seen it as high as $17.99. Well, <coughs> at Hidden Reef, they were on sale for $5.69. So my wife said, why don't you buy 10 boxes while you're at it? You use them all the time. She's absolutely right. And so we bought the filter cartridges last week. Later that week, I finally said, you know, I'm tired of the sound. I'm going to do something about it. So I went out to buy the impeller, which is evidently where the noise comes from. And the net result of that was the impeller is like 15, 16 bucks. But they also had advertised the Marineland filter uh, <clears throat> 200 for 15.99. I said, now wait a minute. I can buy the whole filter for the price of the impeller. Well, <clears throat> as it turns out, that particular model takes a size C filter cartridge. And of course, we just bought basically 40 of the size E's. So I went trying to find out what size E fits. I couldn't find out what model I had here, but I did find out from the complaints that people had registered that this was a common problem for that particular model. All right, so whatever filter I'm going to replace it with, I finally decided to replace it, <clears throat> has to use the size E filters. Well, the answer to all of that was the Marineland Emperor 400 which is good enough for an 80 gallon tank. And so I said, you know what? It's a 55 gallon tank, it won't be that bad. I'll go ahead and order that. And I did. And it was on sale for $55, which is evidently something you can find other places too, but I did it online. And the net result was, three days later, this box arrived, packed very nicely in a shipping box. Well, when I took it all out, I put it all together. I had to make some cutting into the cover for that bow tank, which is where this was going. And I put it all together. I rinsed off the two filter, two E's fit on this now, as you can maybe see in this particular picture. And so when I rinsed them and put them into the tank filter, which was hanging on the back, all of a sudden water is running out the bottom. I had missed the fact that, I don't know if you can see it, but this carton, the, the product carton inside the shipping box, had been bashed in. And it crinkled or cut, it broke one of those two reservoirs. And so I was very frustrated, but I was so glad because that filter sits right above all the electrical work for that tank. And as it turned out, I would have normally just taken a pitcher of water to fill up those reservoirs but I hadn't. If I had, the entire pitcher of water would have gushed out of the bottom onto all that electrical work. So the good news is that didn't happen, but the good news is this filter does take the E, and I called the online company back. They said, sorry about that, we'll ship you out another one. All right. And so they did exactly what I would expect them to do. Then I ran into the other problem. You see, I'm looking at this thing, and this is a $55 when it's on sale filter. Everything is right about it except one of those two reservoirs. And I'm thinking, and they didn't want it back. So I'm thinking to myself, huh, if I can waterproof that reservoir wherever it's broken, I would have another big filter that I could put on that corner tank maybe. And so I set about doing that. I went to Home Depot, found some uh, aquarium sealant and proceeded to use some duct tape on the outside and the sealant on the inside to try and stop 
that leak. Well, as it turns out, as careful as I was, that really didn't work. And so this is going into the garbage uh, with me taking out the impeller, the two e-filters, uh, the whatever, the bio canisters, whatever the heck they are, bio wheels. And so I'll have that. But before I throw it out, I wanted to put the challenge out to each of you. And there's the inner workings, okay? And so one of those canisters is cracked down here and actually bashed in. So there's a hole and a couple other cracks, which right now makes this unusable. But if you have an idea out there, I'd love to hear in your comments about how I could waterproof that canister over these cracks. And like I said, I've used the aquarium cement on it, or a sealant, that, that clear, almost plastic-like sealant. And that didn't work. Maybe I didn't get it. It's so hard to get into that canister. It's so deep and actually make it work because the sealant is not fluid. It's, uh, you can push it around, but it's not fluid. And so I'm asking you your help. How can I make that canister waterproof so that I can take advantage of this piece of garbage that I'm going to be throwing out. It's just one of those things that's sitting there. I've got nothing to lose, everything to gain, and it just frustrates me to have a piece so close that I can't use. And again, <laughs> thank God, now I've got not only the 10 boxes, but the two filters that came with each of these to work with. So I've got 44 filter cartridges, which each is supposed to last a month. That's not what my experience has been. But anyway, any ideas? Send them either by email to gleasonjim at aol.com or just put a comment here and I'll see and I'll reply to it. Help! Meanwhile, the office tank has had a reworking and uh, I just was getting too overcrowded. And so we moved out all the sword tails. There was about six sword tails that had grown up in this tank. Move them out into the other tanks as you'll see later. And also took out half of the black mollies. Now you still see a lot of black mollies in here. I think there's about 10 left, including that big female right there. And there's a big male that matches her. And the rest of these are all their babies, okay? And some of the females really look very pregnant. And so we've got some guppies in here. And oh, the other challenge I had, we had those two clown loaches in here, as you may remember. And clown loaches, eat snails. Well they've kept this tank pretty clear of any snails. All I've got is shells in here. But both other tanks have been overrun with snails. And so with concern I took everything out of this tank so I could catch those clown loaches. They are fast. And was able to move one into the bow tank and one into the corner tank. Now that's a risky thing because we had clown loaches in the bow tank. They developed ick and I lost them both. And so for a long while we have resisted moving these clown loaches which are getting bigger and bigger as they are, tend to do. Same thing with the red tailed sharks. Into moving them out to those tanks. Now it's been maybe two years but my understanding is ick stays there forever even though we've cleaned that tank several times. So we're going to wait and see what happens with that but right now we have a bunch of guppies that are left here. Others were moved out. And as you will see later, that sword tail in the maternity tank has not given up her babies. And it's been several months now. And so I finally put her back in one of the tanks. And I don't know. Can anybody answer that other question for me? How long can a female hold on to the developing eggs? Not eggs anymore, but I mean embryos. That's what we're talking about. And how can they hold on to that for months? Because when I put her in there, she was heavy and gravid, and she still is. But she never let the babies go. And so I finally gave up and put her back just yesterday. So these black mollies look beautiful, and as you'll see in the other tank, they actually form a nice school. I've never seen a school of black mollies. They just look so beautiful, and they're all very healthy. Some of them are retaining the liar tail uh, characteristics. Some are not. And the parents were li liar tail. And so we have, uh, this tank was cleaned out just yesterday. And you can maybe see the big male coming around here every once in a while. 
Uh, there he is down in the choir. He's chasing somebody. He's got beautiful finage. And he matches up with that large female you just saw before. And then these are all their babies. And you can see the, mo the mothers there can be very pregnant. But whenever I put them in that maternity tank, as I call it, they just sit on the bottom and don't do anything. So I finally take them out. But uh, there, there's the male. And you saw the female before. Maybe she's going to be around. Anyway, so this has become a guppy black molly tank. A couple catfish. And uh, that noise in here isn't too bad. I'll let you hear the noise of the other one. The, the big filter, that Emperor 400 now, still makes some noise, but it's not from the impeller. It's from the flow of water. It's got two reservoir tanks, so it's like twice the size of the filter that was in there before, which now, by the way, is on the back of this tank. So this is getting a heavier filtration than it had before. And so that's the challenge. I'm asking you, one, any ideas how I could waterproof that reservoir so I don't have to throw away a perfectly good filter? And secondly, how do females hang on to those embryos so long? Comment below. Need your help. Okay, we're out here at the bow tank. And uh, just did a nice trip down to Blackwood uh, where the aquarium center is and found despite their price are normally pretty high they had some nice tetras on sale for $1.99 and you could buy 12 for the uh, price of 10 so the neon tetras you see here schooling back there along with the black mollies that are moved out here uh, were only like $1.67 a piece which is a great price. And uh, I also moved out this blue electric blue ram from the office tank because he was going after anything small and there should be more babies in that tank. The Black Mollies were schooling here yesterday. I think I've got about 10 of them in here from the babies from that large pair. And I'm very pleased with that. I've had good luck with them long ago, but they disappeared over time. It's one of those things you don't even notice when they're disappearing until you can't find them anymore. And so, I think what else is new out here? I'm not going to overdo this tank. I did want to share with you the sound of this uh, Emperor 400 filter that I replaced. The other one uh, was a smaller one uh, that was making noise that bothered me. This is making noise too, but as I hope you can hear it's a water sound and somehow that doesn't bother me as much. It's sort of soothing to have that look to it, or that sound to it. So anyway, we added those uh, 12 neons. We were looking for some clown loaches. Uh, we put the two clown loaches, one in this tank and one in the corner tank that we'll see in a minute. We'll never see them again in here. They disappear. Uh, but I had a snail challenge problem all over the place, and they eat snails. So my goal was to put one in each and clean up that problem. We'll see how that works out. The plants continue to do very well, as you can see. And uh, we're down to just the two angels. Uh, we did lose the female of those, that green killie. Uh, didn't look good for a while, so I'm not surprised. So just enjoying, especially the black mollies, which are our own. That blue ram really likes it in here. It's, his color is iridescent. I don't know if the camera is going to pick up the coloration I'm seeing with the lighting here. But you sort of get a sense of those black mollies, don't you? Come those neons again schooling nicely. There's 12 of them all together, at least there were when I put them in there yesterday. <laughs> and again, thank you for your comments. I hope you have some solutions to my challenge with that Emperor 400 before I throw it out. I'll hang on to it, see if you give me any ideas that I can use it. 
would be nice to add that to the uh, corner tank also. This thing is really keeping this tank clear. But you can see again some of the snails that are all over this tank. We'll see if the crown loaches do their, their job. And here's the corner tank. What's interesting to me is we did add what you can see here, the silver tip tetras. See them right there? A dozen of them. Again, $1.67 a piece, given the 12. And uh, they don't school quite like the neons do. Neons really form a nice schooling mass going around. Uh, they're, if you look, you see them. And you also may notice the snails on the glass here. Hopefully over time the clown loach that got moved here will uh, take care of them. Meanwhile we moved out a bunch of the orange sword tails, the brick red sword tails I think they're called. And they're looking beautiful. Uh, the big uh, Amazon sword plant is the focus in this particular tank. Finally the pearl grammys are starting to grow up as you see here. I may move them over to the other tank where the one pearl grammy is still holding his own. But they're a very pretty fish. And there come some of the silver tip tetras. As they get bigger they'll look a lot nicer. There's that very nice sword tail, the father to many of these others. The guppies are doing well here. And like I said, the sword plant takes over most of the tank. We do have over in this corner that Madagascar lace plant coming back slowly but surely, expanding its leaves. And I gotta do something with the lighting here. It's uh, a little too dark may not look that way on this video, but it is. Short view of the maternity tank. I took that large sword tail out. She never did have her babies in here, as I said earlier. And uh, the babies here are getting bigger. I really should start moving them out and figure out what we're going to do here. Added a nice plant here that we just picked up down at the aquarium center. I know I need a plant like a hole in the head, but it was very beautiful.